Well, hi there, students. It's Mr. Verzette. This video is going to teach you kind of a new production technique that you saw me touch on on the previous video, and that's called a photo noise palette. Now, I use this for my beginner students mainly because when they're just learning how to control value, how to control color, this technique really helps jumpstart the process. And it's what I call a production method, meaning there's the recreational way that we create, where we sit back and just have fun drawing. And then there's the production-centered way where we create, where we have to meet deadlines and manage the way that we create in such a way that we can reach those deadlines effectively, because other people ultimately depend on our productivity. So we are using a character drawing. Now, I'm not going to finish this, bring it up to full completion. We're only going to look at the earliest block-in stages. Well, the first step is you take your layer that has your line art and you set it to multiply. We're going to lock that layer and have it at the very top of our layer order. And what multiply does is it gets rid of any of the white pixels and just leaves the dark lines. So I've got a bunch of layers here right now. Some of them are pre-made just from demonstration purposes. Next, we paint in a silhouette. Now this can be any color. I, I just do gray because the silhouette ultimately doesn't matter using the method that we will learn today. Uh, the purpose of the silhouette, it's basically a clipping mask where it allows you to command click this little picture here on the layer window. And using that, we can create a brand new layer and just paint within it and not worry about going outside the lines. It also helps us extract the character and add a whole bunch of different really neat effects. I tell my students to work on a mid-tone background of some kind. It really helps them to see the darks and the lights better when they paint, and it's easier on the eyes as well. All right, what you see here is a bunch of photo noise. If I turn off the line art and zoom in really close, it's just a bunch of gibberish, cookie cutted out to fit within the character sketch. None of this subject matter, none of the stuff in the photo matters. All I'm looking for are the colors and the values. So for example, my character is going to have gold inlaid armor. So I found a photograph of the inside of a mansion. And in that mansion with Baroque architecture, there were lights, middles, and darks that matched the value contrast and the range that I really wanted on the, on the, on the form. You're gonna be like these jewels that are on many of the, of the different parts of the armor. And I found that the fender of an automobile, mainly around like the front nose area, really had the value range of like these glowing kind of a sapphire looks that I really wanted. I've also got some ornate rugs because I really want kind of a deep purple with gold inlaid kind of designs on the cloth of the character. Lastly, for the cape, we've got a close up of, I don't know really what it is, it's been a while, I think it might be a flower petal. But anyway, the lights, middles, and darks really match the overall texture that I wanted. You should already have in mind an idea of what the materials and kind of what you want to see out of it. And so the type of picture really doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter. If the blue gradients in the background of this cute little grumpy cat happen to have the kind of color blue and the darks and lights that you want, well, use it. What I tell my students is, ignore the photo altogether. It's, again, just the lights and darks. So stretch that photo out. Use a soft-edged eraser. And erase out the elements that you don't need. And I also tell my students to occasionally blur the photo because you want to be you want to get rid of any temptation to rely on the photograph because that's just photo tracing, right? That's not actually anything creative happening at all. So to blur it, you just go to blur and I tell them usually go to motion blur and depending on like direction of the form or something, just have a blur that goes at a different angle. And now you can blur it too much to where it loses all of its color and its contrast. So you want to blur it to where you can't really make out what it is anymore. You just got this jumble of chaos. And then once you have a ton of these photos, then you're going to have a lot of a big messy area. Well, that's where your silhouette comes into play. Merge all of your photos together by shift clicking and highlighting them and then hit command E to merge them. So now they're all in one layer. And then to trim, just command click that silhouette that you painted. Select the opposite. 
So I'm going to go to Select, Inverse. Make sure that you've got your layer that has your photos highlighted, and then just hit Delete. And you see it's trimmed it to fit within the line art. In a brand new layer, which I'm going to put on top of my photo noise, I'm going to call it Block In. So what I mean by sampling is, is that I'm looking at the darks and I'm applying that to the darks of the actual form. So here's his chest plate. And if we think that his light is coming from above, you know, like above and to the left, that means the underside here is going to get a core shadow. Likewise, we'll get a core shadow here and right on this rim and inside under the armpit. And so I got that color by sampling here. So let's get some of the mid-tones. So I might get like the mid-tone color that I want and just start to paint that in everywhere there's going to be mid-tone. If I want to get that bright highlight color, which in this case is very close to white, I'll start to apply that highlight over to the overall general form here. And you see I'm painting over the photograph. And this is in its own layer now. I've got my photo that I can access. But let's just, uh, let's just turn off the photo for now and see what we've got. Already we're starting to get the turning of the form. We've got the darks under here. We've got the mid-tone and the lights. And we can continue working in this manner until the piece is entirely finished. So I'm just going to take some time right now and start adding the darks, the middles, and the lights. Around here in this leg area, it's going to get a little confusing because there's so much noise in the photo that it can be a little difficult to see just what is uh, where the line art is. So I'm just dropping in the mid-tones over here. Again, this is just real time. I'm not saying rush, but in general, you want to be working in a way where your arm is constantly moving. Um, and to give you a little context, students are coming out of a lesson where we were working on what are called isoparms. It's these gridded organic shapes that have these little cross contours going over the top of them. And uh, they help you to plot the, the three-dimensional feeling, the geometry of these forms. And it helps you know, well, where does the form turn under? Where does the form uh, rise up and catch light? And there should be an understanding of a basic one, two, three read. Remember, the brain needs to see at least three values on a thing in order for it to think that the form is turning in 3D, to give that illusion of three dimension as we're working. So I'm not drawing in a flat way. Notice with these pant legs, I'm, I'm drawing in a way that really matches where the folds are going. And, and how do I know how folds work? Well, they are already drawn in using the line art. See, the folds are already there. And so by understanding how fabric works, that would help you make the line art. And so you work in the fundamentals, you know, one step at a time, just working your way up. How does fabric work? How does metal shine? What does, uh, uh, how dark does gold get and, and such? And so you'll get to a point where you will actually uh, have these flat tones put in and, and you want to keep it loose. We call it a block in because we use very blocky strokes, very gestural, angular painting strokes that really are not very pretty to look at. As a matter of fact, your block in is going to be pretty darn sloppy. In terms of the size of my brush that I'm using right now, um, I'm using a big one. I mean, this is like a big 11 by 17 inch canvas. And uh, my brush right now is, uh, you know, like a size 100. It's, it's really large. Uh, the brush that you use really doesn't matter that much. Um, what matters is your lighting, your showing turning of the forms. What matters is uh, your understanding of the anatomy. And really at this point it's very loose. I'm not getting uh, very attached to the drawing right now. I'm not thinking, oh, I've got to make everything perfect. See how I'm just wiggling my brush? Uh, beginners oftentimes when they paint uh, get really stiff and tight. You know, keep it fluid, keep it loose. You know, and again, I'm just shooting for those three major values and I'm working at a very high opacity here. Um, just grabbing a color, blapping it in, 
blocking it in and not really getting too deep. There's going to be a time for that, though. I mean, there'll be a time when we need to clean our values and start to detail this little fella up. But, but that time is not now. Now it's just to capture the lighting, capture the overall value directions, um, place things where they need to go, get the shiny, uh, the ones, get the twos, get the threes. And that way, when you need to do your details, you just sample directly from this big mess that you've made. So doing a, that is actually, this part of this pauldron is turned away from the light. So that's going to be a little darker. This turns under. Grab my lights and shrink my brush down a little bit in size. Let's get some mid-tone in there as well. And so here's a fun little check I have my students do uh, as they're working. Uh, it, what you do is you have a black layer and you set it to saturation blending mode. And you just paint bucket it black. And it helps you really see the value range. You can tell that the legs are very dark. We still need to do a lot more contrast here in this area. Um, also to separate the arm from the cape. The, the arm is starting to blend into the cape quite a bit. So I'm just going to turn that off and go back to work over here. So maybe we need to darken that cape up. And I just don't see any dark values in the photo that I relied on. Remember, the photo is just a tool. So I'm going to sample the darkest that I already have. I'm going to add a shadow color, which, which wasn't really there in the photo that I was working with. So let's continue our block in. And uh, again, I'm working at a high level of opacity. And I've got that red, and so let's just turn on our black and white. This is what it would look like if it is in black and white. And already we're starting to separate that shoulder, separate that arm from that cape. I think I need to add some more lights to the um, to the bicep over here so that it pops a little bit better. So let's get some of the lights that we have established in the other parts of the body that have the same attention. All right, so if we zoom out, let's take a look at a before and after. So this would be before, after, before, after. Just capturing that turning of form. Let's turn off the photo layer and uh, see what we have with just the paint. I'm going to kill the line art as well. And you see, uh, ugh, there's some really spots that we didn't even touch. And so in general, uh, by the time you've got the whole thing blocked in, the vast majority, if not all, of the form is covered. You've got turning of form. And if we zoom way out, it starts to hold together. If we get really close, ugh, it's crazy nasty. Well, that's normal. That's that ugly duckling stage that paintings go through when you work. But let's say we spent a little bit more time working on it. And this is a block in that I finished uh, a long, long time ago. This would be kind of that range where uh, you've got most of the colors in that you need. And then you would spend the remaining, you know, four or five hours of the illustration uh, cleaning and refining. So this is a new block and let's turn off the line art. And, ah! But you see it holds together a little bit better, right? Zoomed out from a distance, there's more value range, there's more mixture of paint. Um, need to have more detail. But um, and then from here, again, it's just detailing. Cleaning your values, refining edges, suggesting textures. I hope you guys found this helpful, and I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Take care.